Welcome back to Real Surf Stories. I'm your host, TR. Today, one of surfing's all-time greats, Todd Chesser. Cheese encapsulated many of the greatest aspects of being a surfer. He was uncensored, aggressive, respectful, stylish, ballsy, opinionated, unique, creative, athletic, confident, poised, and gracious. My first memory of Todd was a book I believe it was called Surfing Around the World. I contacted his mother, Jeannie, to see if she had a copy of this book. She didn't remember that book, but sent me this amazing photo right here. Jeannie herself was and is a top level surfer, and she finaled in various world and US championships throughout the 70s and 80s. So Jeannie moved to Hawaii with Todd when Todd's father David was killed in an automobile accident in Miami. So Todd, being raised surfing in Hawaii, uh, came from a long line of esteemed Hawaiian greats. And he emerged at a time when there was no substitute for charging hard. His peer group of Sean Briley and Poncho Sullivan and Keone Watson and all those kids his age were just full-on chargers and just showed so much talent from day one. It was obvious they were all going to go on to greatness. As the 90s came around, Todd had established himself as one of the best guys out there. North Shore spots, Todd was already dominating, and Cheese was right there for them with plenty of tough love. Cheese was all over the magazines, he was doing video trips, surfing contests, he finished fourth overall in the PSAA Tour in 1990, but the contest game was never his deal. A quote from his buddy Junior Hill, I think, puts it perfectly. He was one of the lucky guys who got paid to surf big, perfect waves whenever he wanted to. He didn't have to do it in contests or on tour. He surfed for the love of it. I traveled with Todd throughout Indonesia and Africa in the mid 90s to film his part for O'Neill Jacked. And I will put that part in its entirety at the end of this video. That was an experience I'll never forget. Traveled with Cody Graham everywhere and on different legs of the journey with Corey Lopez and Anthony Rufo, Adam Rapogel, Chris Gallagher, Munster, Mark Taylor, all dear friends of Todd's and Man, we had so much fun. When his part from Jacked came out, Surfing Magazine called Todd the greatest non-rated surfer in the world. On those trips, inevitably, we would show up to a spot and there would be the momentum generation. Or they would be checking the waves, we'd be checking the waves. And since Kelly and Adam and Taylor Knox and Rob and Josh Loya and, and Munster and all these guys are such good friends from childhood. We always wanted to surf together and shoot together. But Taylor Steele never wanted that. He always wanted exclusives. And man, there was so many times that we'd show up, the waves were perfect, and they would just go somewhere else because we were going to go out there and shoot and surf. And Todd was a big friend of all of ours. so. When the magazines kind of made like these kind of separate groups, 
and people to this day kind of think that's how it was. That's not how it was at all. And Todd was a perfect example of that. Um, surfing was universal and we were friends across the board. Man, there are so many classic stories from those trips with Todd. A lot of people remember Todd for his sense of humor. And he was sarcastic, he was cynical, and he was always joking around. And he loved to see other people's reactions. And one classic thing I'll never forget was we had the current edition of Surfing Magazine um, in our flat that we were renting in Durban. It was uh, Rufo and Cody and I, and I believe Dean Randazzo actually was staying with us. And Todd had gone through with a permanent marker and on the cover and on every page of the magazine had either like put a dick over someone's head or bent the person over with some kind of other crazy characteristics or commentary calling the guy a kook or or like all just the most over the top funniest stuff ever but it was all kind of stuff that I think was coming from a place of truth because Todd he had like such a high level of surfing and and came from such an elite aspect of surfing that he would hear people's take on surfing and whatnot, and you just look at him, he just shake his head, and he was just kind of on a different playing field in his mind and in reality. And so he he did this magazine where he just wrote everybody off in every every editorial shot, every advertisement, and uh, some people that were at our house like saw the magazine, were like oh my God, look at this, and then they went out and then they talked about it, and before you knew it. I think every surfer on tour came to our flat to look at that magazine, one after another after another, because they heard that what Todd had written about them or what he wrote about someone else. And every single person that came by laughed their ass off because a lot of it was true, but all of it was hilarious. And Todd had that way of just kind of crossing, crossing boundaries that others couldn't even step up to. And man. He's so, so, so greatly missed. Oh, another classic story I'll never forget from that same trip. We were in Durban and we were going out to dinner. It was Todd, Cody and I. And we got in this elevator, but there was kind of a lot of people. So when I got in, Todd and Cody just waited behind for the next one so there wouldn't be too many people in the elevator. So I went down. Then I got out of the elevator and then I was just standing outside waiting and then the next elevator came and opened it up, no Todd and Cody. And then I was just kind of confused, so I was standing there and uh, then the next elevator came down and still no Todd and Cody and I'm like, whoa, what the heck? You know, did they go back in the apartment? Like, what, what's going on? And so. They had taken the stairs down and came around and were like standing behind me watching the whole time. So, man, I was waiting a long time and finally I was like standing there and I think like the, the elevator opened up and I made some kind of reaction and I heard this laughing from behind me and I turned around and there they were sitting there watching me the whole time and man, there were so many of those. Um, God, I got to think of another one. Oh, okay. So we were in Bali and decided we wanted to do a boat trip. And it was Cody Graham, Corey Lopez and I. And somehow Todd met these people and contracted this old sailboat with this like 70 year old Aussie guy and his wife. Um, I can't imagine why it must have been a really cheap price or something like that because it looked sus from the second I saw the boat. The second I met them, we got on board and there we were going out to sea. And we broke down in the middle of the ocean and it was sketchy. I was pretty scared and things got pretty tense on there. And uh, 
the the owner of the boat was rebuilding the engine out at sea so he had the entire engine open and Todd was like hovering over the guy like watching him work the whole time like intense and I was trying to at first make light of the situation and look at the positive side and and say positive things and Todd would just look at me with like dagger eyes like no bro like nothing positive to say here like shut up you know and Cody is deaf so he was just looking at the whole thing with these big old eyeballs and then Corey started off pretty positive but then slipped into getting real dark real quick and uh, there was a moment he actually wanted to fight me and he was like listening to this punk rock music and getting all wound up and we were in the kitchen and I said something that wasn't even to him I think to the chef about like there was some meat on my plate or something I'm vegetarian it was some kind of thing and uh, Corey just snapped he's like fuck you got in my face he's like I don't want to hear any more vegetarian and uh, it was all good nothing happened I mean we're really good friends and always have been but it was a tense moment where all of us were kind of at our wits end and I never even harped on Corey about vegetarianism or or even talked about my diet throughout life because I know what a touchy subject that is but it was back there in his mind somewhere and wow somehow the guy fixed the motor and we made it to Sumbawa and by that time we were all just kind of frazzled out and we went and, and shot uh, the other side which was a really fun right because the winds were bad for the spots we wanted to go shoot and uh, Todd no matter where we would go the waves were never really like good in, in his mind but he would always go out and just carve the bag out of it such a powerful surfer and so technical and he always seemed to be able to harness the power of the wave and do these just extremely exaggeratedly powerful gouges but make it look elegant and man there's just so many memories and, and stories but so Todd was taken from us on February 11th 1997 at just 29 years of age that day he was scheduled to fly to Maui to stunt double a death scene for the Hollywood movie in God's hands and the swell was cranking on the North Shore and he decided not to go and wanted to surf outer alligator reef with Cody Graham and Aaron Lambert and they paddled out there and it was 25 plus and after being out there for about two hours uh, they got in, caught inside by a 25 foot set and they were paddling out and a big wave was coming in Todd stood on his board and dived in to avoid the wave and it was bad and when Cody and Aaron saw that he was in trouble they went into him and tried to resuscitate him and paddle him in but they got caught by another set and they lost him and I think the surfing world changed that day forever and Todd will always be remembered for so many great things and all the attributes of being a surfer that we all should strive for.
I can't say much about that wave that it doesn't say for itself. The place is it's awesome. Expecting every hit in the water, no matter how good they surf, no matter how jump they surf, you know, it's good to give them respect. And after you're giving them respect, you can find soul in yourself that you can have fun in surfing and forget about, you know, what's what's it really about, you know, like not the contest stuff, not who's the best surfer, it's just about having fun and doing what you want on the wave and having fun and see where you can go and travel. And when you do that, then you, that's where you find soul.
shaking the knees. I'm shaking from head to toe right now. Just out of being tired. Gosh, 300 yards on the way. somebody do a trick, don't do tricks because he ain't doing tricks, you know, do whatever you feel like it, you know, it's about, it's about the wave itself, what you're doing on the wave that makes you feel good, it's not, power is not the best thing in surfing, tricks not the best thing, it's about what you feel like doing on that wave yourself. I think they're doing a lot of great stuff in small waves, um, I think the next step is to do those things in maybe 8 to 10 foot surf, or bigger, which is probably uh, a little bit dangerous, but uh, it'll be fun to try. <laughs> can do something new. I try to just to try to do something that excites myself. You know, doing a little trick excites me sometimes when it's small in California. You know, I have to go do do powerful turns when there's swells, but when it's small, you know, I just like to mix it up because I get bored.